Yes, hello, this is Grandpa Ron. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about charging. Uh, yeah, like the first question I had is, how do I charge this thing once I've driven it? And the second question is, how far can I go on a full charge? Well, today I'm going to answer both of those questions. Every Tesla comes with a mobile connector. Yeah, so this is how you can charge your Tesla at home. Uh, here's a plug for plugging into 120 volts. Uh, you just stick this in, plug it into the wall, and off you go. Okay, once you have that plugged in, you just plug it in over here. Um, yeah, I think you push this button here. Yes, it pops up. Put it in. For my first charge, that's exactly what I did. I plugged into the garage outlet, uh, ran extension cord over to the car, charged it up for nine hours overnight, and yeah, I got like 37 uh, extra miles out of it. So yeah, that's gonna take forever. Practically speaking, you might be able to use this when you go to see your brother-in-law and you can use his electricity for free. But uh, yeah, plan on staying there a while. Uh, it's gonna take uh, at least four days to get a full charge. Uh, using the 120 volt outlet so yeah see how that works out this week sdg and &E, our local utility company uh, finally gave my solar company permission to put my new electro panel in that allowed me to wire in this ev outlet it's a 240 volt uh, it's a nema 1450 outlet so this will this will provide like 32 amps and charges at four or five times faster than the 120 um, and also it's a lot more efficient Okay, get ready to do my first level two charging. First thing is, is uh, yeah, I have to take this 115 volt plug off. Okay, you need to buy this uh, adapter. It's uh, 35 bucks at uh, Tesla. This allows you to plug into the NEMA box. Okay, ready to go. Let's go up here to, yeah, maybe right around there. That should be good. And 32 amps for that. So in the schedule, I got it set at 9.15 tonight. Um, okay, so that's the cheapest rates. We'll go with that. Okay, charging has started. Yeah, 32 is the max. Should be charged in. Charging complete. Yeah, looks like it finished ahead of schedule. All right, looks good, ready to go. Well, all charged up. Yeah, even finished a little bit early. It's a quarter after three in the morning, so uh, yeah, if I had an early up road trip, I'd be ready to go. So, looks good. I think I'll go get some coffee. So that brings us to our third option, the Tesla wall connector. Yeah, uh, you can buy them for $500, but you also have to hire an electrician to wire it in. So that's gonna cost you another $100 or $200, uh, depending on where you live. Uh, but anyway, they're really nice. Uh, they do allow you to charge up to 48 amps instead of 32. But uh, the main reason people get these is for convenience. It's just permanently attached in your garage or your wall, and you have a little hook for your cords and stuff. So you just come home from work, plug it in, Next day you're ready to go, you don't even think about it. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I might get one someday, but right now I don't drive a lot. So I only have to charge like maybe once every week or two, probably two weeks. So uh, yeah, we'll wait and see.
other way to charge your car is through the superchargers. Uh, go to your Tesla app. Um, this will then charging. Yeah, and it's going to show you your local uh, superchargers. You can see here. Yeah, zero out of 23 available. That one's always really busy. It's in a shopping center. But uh, anyway, so if you tap that, it will send it now to... Now turn left onto Valley Vista Way. Okay. Then that sends it right directly to your screen. And you're ready to go. And it will route you right there. So we'll head up there and check it out. And see what a urban supercharger is. Now your destination is on the right. It's on the left. Alright, we're going to plug her in. This is a really busy place. There's only a few available out of the 23 slots. But anyway, yeah, this is a uh, urban supercharger, so there's not as much power, 72 kilowatts. Uh, but anyway, it's a very convenient place, so apparently a lot of people stop by here to charge up their cars. So. So, how often and how much do you really need to charge? A couple of things to consider. I don't like to completely drain the battery or charge it over 85%. So I'll be recharging after about 150 miles of in-town driving. Another thing to consider is, uh, yeah, my wife Civic uh, parked in the garage there. Uh, it doesn't use any energy while it's sitting there. But the Tesla does use battery power just sitting in the driveway. My Tesla goes to sleep when you're not using it, but uh, I never completely powers down yeah, and there's actually just three things that can drain your battery just while it's sitting. First one is sentry mode. You can program it so it's not recording when you're at home or at work but uh, yeah it's still active and uh, I've been losing about three miles of range every night. Yeah I even parked at home but uh, so the best thing to do is just turn it off. Second one is the cabin overheat protection. Uh, yeah that's supposed to come on either the air conditioning or the fan depending on what you have it set. Uh, and it keeps the uh, cabin from getting too hot during the day. But uh, yeah, I found it to be like 145 degrees on the really warm days. But uh, yeah, that can use a significant amount of power too, especially on the air conditioning setting. But rather than use this feature, I'm planning to get some window tinting and that'll cut down the heat coming into the cabin and uh, make it more comfortable. And the third is uh, software updates. Uh, they don't happen too frequently, but uh, my last software update, yeah, I lost like 10 miles of range overnight. However, if you uh, drive your car every day, then uh, there's no harm in plugging in every night. Then you don't really have to worry about that. For me, since I don't have to drive to work every day, uh, yeah, I'm still trying to figure this out. So how far can you go? On the highway with your air conditioning running and stuff, figuring at most I'll be able to go maybe 200 miles between superchargers. For sure, you're not going to get anywhere near the EPA rating of 316 miles. On a long trip, I'm planning on getting about uh, 200 miles between superchargers. And with potty breaks, it may be even shorter than that, but oh my, uh, we'll I see. I can't hold it! I can't hold it anymore! For normal driving, home charging is probably the most convenient and cheapest way to go. There's no problem plugging your Tesla in every night. As long as you don't charge it over 90% all the time, yeah, there should be no problem with the battery life. As a matter of fact, Tesla says they designed these batteries to last for 500,000 miles. Yeah, way more than I'm going to get on this. However, if you can't charge at home, then uh, maybe you can charge up at work. Uh, some companies have a little charger you can plug into. Or if not that, then uh, try one of those urban superchargers. You can stop on your way uh, going to from work or even at lunchtime. Uh, it takes about an hour to get a full charge, so then you'll be good to go. Next month, we're going to be making a long trip from San Diego to Colorado for my granddaughter's uh, fourth birthday party. So uh, we'll have more information then on how to charge on a trip. But before that, I'm going to look into some ways to protect the uh, paint from rock chips and stuff like that. And uh, maybe some uh, window tinting to kind of keep the uh, solar, solar down a little bit, keep it a little bit cooler inside. 
the AC can use up to uh, 10 horsepower in regular cars. So yeah, I'm not sure how much uh, it uses in here, but uh, we'll find out and I'll let you know. So for now, this is Grandpa Ron signing off. See you on the next video.